our friend Kathy Pinnell Figginshu proudly claims that it was the uh, our saviors youth group that named Lord of Love. And it was um, based on the, the hymn, Pass It On. And um, so they, they love to take credit for naming Lord of Love. Well, I was, at, I was at Lord of Love the very first Sunday because I was a lifelong member of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. It was a Norwegian, Danish Lutheran Church and um, formed in 1881. So it had a long, rich uh, history. In 1970, the church began to realize it needs to do something different. And we were part of that decision to close. Well, Our Saviors was a, a decreasing population in a minority neighborhood and people were moving west and not living close to the church anymore. Our son was born in 1971. He was, I think, maybe the last baby baptized at Our Saviors because there were not many children being born. After lots of discussion and study and prayer, um, it was determined by the congregation to close our saviors and open uh, a mission church in Northwest Omaha. It was not quite prairie. <laughs> it had been a farmstead. Not much around it. It was pretty open. And we were the first thing on the corner. Not much to see. <laughs> 72nd was pretty much the furthest west Omaha went. I mean, there were none of the apartment buildings, none of the grocery stores, drug stores. Uh, yeah, it was it was new. It was a long ways for us because we live in Benson, but it was worth it to be part of a of a new venture like this. The Sunday prior to the first Sunday was the final closing service at Our Savior. The current minister and five previous ministers in attendance along with the bishop and there was special music and what have you. And the very next Sunday was the opening. And yes, I remember vividly, we stood outside. Nobody um, entered the church. We were part of the procession coming into the building. We instantly liked everything here. It was quite a celebration on the very first Sunday and it was a, it was a joyous occasion. It had no pews. It was just open and it had all kinds of flexibility ahead. And we liked that. One thing, there was no air conditioning. Um, and so during the summer, it was warm. Uh, not terrible for morning uh, worship because somebody would always get there early and open up the doors to allow the cool air in. Uh, with the doors open, we always had crickets in the church. so. The crickets would join in with the singing of the hymns, but after the congregation stopped, the crickets did not. So quiet times of prayer were always filled with music from the crickets. The, the, the biggest thing is, of course, there was no fellowship hall in that other new wing. So the kitchen was on the south, south side of the, of the sanctuary. Office, office space was where the current uh, Sunday school rooms are on the north side, uh, just, just a lot smaller. When we had any social gatherings, had to clear all the chairs, put up tables. And then after it was over, we have to take everything back down and put the chairs back. It had one of the most beautiful pipe organs that uh, Lord of Love still has now. And it came from Our Saviors. Um, it was dismantled at Our Saviors, uh, moved out to Lord of Love and reassembled. The pipes were just exposed. They had trouble with tuning. And so they, we built that uh, with volunteers in the church. We built the surround and the humidity control for the pipe organ. Probably more so than the comfort of the people, the, <laughs> the comfort of the pipes was high on the list of, of why we wanted to, um, why we wanted to air condition. And there was going to be a sanctuary off to the west, a big fancy sanctuary. And after a few years, people realize that we're not going to need that. We like the flexibility of this space. Every Sunday, as soon as the service was over, all of the chairs were picked up, stacked, moved to the side. Sunday school tables were brought in. And so the sanctuary was used as 
Sunday school, it was used for any kinds of fellowship activities, any dinners. It was this, it was where youth group sleepovers, lock-ins were held. There were many football games that took place in the sanctuary, uh, mostly probably when Pastor Frank was there, I would say. Before, the, there was just no place for the have two events in the same day as far as a wedding and a reception because it was just impossible to restructure the sanctuary that fast. But for bigger events, it was kind of a one-dimensional usage. Uh, we've done numerous uh, enhancements to just the building facilities and with the parking lot, those kind of things are always uh, not always in the budget. So we have special fund drives and those have been all well supported. Uh, we identify the need and everybody agrees that we just need to keep that part strong, part of the church. Otherwise, if you don't have a building, you don't have a church.